This, it was yesterday. It was a week. Because if it was a week ago, I wouldn't have my glasses on anymore. Okay, I know you want to say things when in they, like current it, time. It's, it's a week ago when they see this. Yeah, but it was that day then. That day then. So if we say a week ago, mm-hmm. but I still have glasses on. That means I'm wearing glasses for two weeks because of pink eye when it's really just a week. For like three weeks, actually. Two or three weeks. This comes out next week. Never mind. I don't know what she's saying. You guys understand. Start over. Welcome to the Riley Black Project with Chris and John. Hey. What's up? You know. Just uh, limping through life yep. over here. Yep. Um, we'll get. The, well, uh, I'm going to get this out of the way. Okay. So. I woke up with fucking pink eye yesterday yeah. for the first time in my life. Last week. You what woke you up last week? You woke up last week. I, you're never going to get me to talk in past tense. It's not going to happen. Yeah. They, make them do the math. I'm not, I'm not going to do but, it. But, but this is a show. We're supposed to do the math for them. I don't get paid enough to do that. Okay. Well, yet. let's let's save this banter <laughs> for the for the. For anyway, life that's why I have she the glasses. She got pink eye last week. Pink eye last, last week. week. Oh, see, you did it yesterday. Yep. Yep. Anyway, anyway, who we got? We got B A with wobbly arrow sign works. I had to read that one <laughs> off of my phone. <laughs> How's it going? It's a tongue twister. Right. <laughs> How's it going? It's going good, guys. <laughs> How is it up there in Canada? Can I sucks. Use- <laughs> yeah. I'm a terrible Canadian. I hate the snow. I hate winter. And uh, mm. we got a big dumping of snow last week, and we got another one should be falling any minute. So, oh, yay. Yeah. <laughs> well, we got a big dumping of sun <laughs> here in Florida. Why are you such an asshole? Huh? There's a lot of Canadians here this time of year. There's that's true. I've seen a lot of Quebec tags. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Out in the street. Dang, they drive yeah. all the way down or here. Or shit. I mean, I don't know if they if they haul it. Or I don't know how they do. How, how do, you, do you know how you guys come down here? <laughs> how you guys? Yeah, it's both. A lot of people fly, depending. But there's a lot of snow. We call them snowbirds. People right. that, you know, spend the winter down there. Mm-hmm. Um, I have an aunt and uncle that spend six months of the, the year in Florida. They have a place down there, and they come back here for the summer. Nice. Yeah. So how are the summers then? Here? Yeah. Yeah, they're, you know, I'm, I'm in Ontario. I'm just outside Toronto. So uh, okay. summers are beautiful. It's, uh, yeah. Yeah. Warm, you just sunny. like it when it's not snowy. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, it's funny. I also hate the heat as much oh, as I hate same. the cold. So yeah. Um, I've always said I want to live in a place that's like a perpetual state of fall. <laughs> yes. That, that's where I want to live. Oh, see, fall and, fall and spring are my favorite. Like hoodie weather where it's like decent during the day. It's a little bit cool at night. Mm-hmm. If I can put on my hoodie, it's a good day. Yeah. Okay. And that rarely happens here. But I have realized, so I'm... I'm from Colorado and there's a lot of snow in Colorado and I don't miss the snow at all, but I also don't, I don't enjoy the heat here either. But I mean, there's things that make it a little bit easier, like remote start on my car Mm -hmm. and like, cause I, I just go from AC to AC. But so I think if I had to choose, because I don't want to go back to snow, I think I would choose the heat. Good, but I definitely don't like Good, it because I don't like this. I don't like the cold. <laughs> I rather the heat. I rather sweat than freeze. I guess it's just me. It's hard to say that out loud, but I think yeah. I agree. Yeah. Attention, all laser owners and crafters. Are you tired of spending hours cutting, painting, and assembling laser products? Look no further than Crazy Laser Dad laser ready blanks their high quality blanks are expertly sourced (laughs) tested and ready to use with your lasers say goodbye to the hassle and frustration of time consuming projects and hello to more time creating and selling plus with their wide selection of items you'll surely find the perfect blank for all your customers so what are you waiting for visit crazylaserdad.com today and take your laser crafting to the next level with their laser ready blanks Speaking of all things laser, check out Houston Acrylic at HoustonAcrylic.com for reliable laser tested and laser approved materials. Made for makers by makers, Houston Acrylic features over 450 styles of acrylic sheets. With over 50 new arrivals being released this month, Houston Acrylic is committed to bringing new and innovative styles to the laser community. My personal favorite is the matte 
anything matte. <laughs> and I feel it's perfect for everything. Don't forget to save 10% by using our exclusive coupon code TRBP10 at checkout. Get inspired today and visit HoustonAcrylic.com. Do it. Yeah. <laughs> On to lasers. <laughs> laser shit. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you, you just recently got a laser, but how did you get into, I guess, the creating space since you just got a laser? Yeah. So I got my laser back in uh, probably middle of January. It okay. um, so I've only had it for a couple months. Um, but I've been sign making for a couple of years now. Uh -huh. um, I started off with a scroll saw, um, nice. doing everything by hand. And then, uh, I upgraded to a CNC router. So I was using that exclusively for my signs for, um, about a year, year and a half. Mm -hmm. And I finally made the jump to a laser in January and I couldn't be happier. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, and so what kind of, um, like time savings did you see from like scroll saw to CNC and now CNC to laser? Yeah. So <clears throat> time saving between, um, like the scroll saw and the CNC, I would say it probably wasn't that much surprisingly. Uh -huh. Right. Um, because there's a lot of like the design work is there with the CNC, right? Right. Where you don't really have the same with the scroll saw. It's more the hands-on cutting. Yeah. Um, that time kind of equaled out with the CNC. Right. Where the time savings came, if it was like a repeatable design, right? Like if I already mm. designed it and I'm right. just throwing it into the CNC to cut, then I was saving time. But well, for then, custom pieces, which I do a lot of, I wasn't right. really saving that much time. Mm -hmm. But you were saving, I guess, like the hands-on effort at least, right? Because you yeah. probably had more design time, but you didn't have to sit there and actually use your hands to do it yourself. Yeah, absolutely. And when something was on the CNC cutting, then I could be doing something else, right? So right. I freed up my time that way. And maybe less cleanup as well too, right? Because you're it's by hand and then by machine, there's obviously going to be... <laughs> be less like, you know, wobbly or, you know, I yeah. guess less corrective work. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's, that was one of the um, the reasons why I got the CNC originally was just that the precision, right? Yeah. Um, you know, I'm, I'm pretty good with a scroll saw, but I'll never be as precise as a computer. So. Right. And so this is also still your side business, right? Yes. And so what do you do for your day job if you're allowed to share? <laughs> I am allowed to share. Uh, it surprises a lot of people when they know my on online personality, but I'm actually a full-time police officer. Oh, oh. that, yeah. Surprise. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yes. Yeah, Cause I mean, you're, first of all, the, the way I found you and started following you is because your reels are hilarious. So okay. not to say that police officers can't be hilarious, but I think that's the surprising part. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I always say that, you know, being in the shop and, um, you know, this creative outlet is, is therapy to me, right? Like, for sure. Um, I'm a, I've been a police officer for, uh, I'm in my 17th year now. Wow. And, um, How, you don't that, even look that old. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so you know, I actually, I specialize in investigating sex crimes. So that's pretty, pretty deep stuff I do on a yeah. day to day basis. So. <laughs> This is a, this is how, this is my creative outlet. And this is how I, yeah. I stay sane some days, I think. Yeah. I mean, I bet. Yeah. Cause you definitely have to have a way to, to decompress from, from all of that. If that's your, your day to day. Yeah, absolutely. So, and that's also why probably, I mean, the, so the few police officers that I know that also do laser work, um, it's something where your, your laser business always stays your side business mm. until you retire. Right. Cause you don't, you don't give up those benefits and that's still the, like, that's the breadwinner. That's the pension. That's the, and is it the same way up there? Do you have three years left? No, <laughs> <laughs> I wish. Oh. Um, yeah. Our, our, uh, um, our retirement dates are a little longer. I probably have about 13 years left. Oh, yeah. Whoa. They really want you in. Well, yeah. depending on when he started though, again, he seemed, he, he looks young, whether he is or isn't, yeah, but he said he had, how many years 17. in? 17, right? 17, yeah. Yeah, and here, don't they have the option at 20 to retire? Oh, I have no idea. I think they have the option to retire at 20 I know, years in. I don't know if that's across the U.S., but I know in a lot of states that is. That is yeah. Okay. Yeah, here it is as well. Uh, um, It's it's 20, 20 years. and then you 20 get the, years. Well, then you have the start. option. You don't have to retire. Right. You have the option to retire. When you probably make 20. more staying longer, kind of like normal yes. retirement yes. Yeah. stuff. Yeah, okay. for sure. Hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Interesting. Yeah. So, well, I mean, how did you get in? Did you always want to be a police officer? 
Uh, yeah, it's, yeah. I'll say there's a there's probably a bit of nepotism there. I'm I'm the, the ninth member of my family to mm. oh legacy be nice. a police officer. So wow. Yeah. Um, I've always been you know um, into public and service it, and serving yeah. others. It's a calling I think I have. So um, yeah. it's kind of a natural natural thing for me. That's awesome. And so, what made you go from CNC to the laser, and which one did you get? So the one I got was uh, I have a Thunder Nova 35. Nice. 80 watt. So, uh, and that, that took me a while to decide. I was, you know, I, I looked at all it's the different hard, brands yeah. and it's a lot, right? When you. you know, it's I'm, overwhelming. I mean, every, so everyone has an opinion right. on which brand or whatever. And like you, you're kind of like, I don't like brand whores yeah. to a certain, yeah. to a certain extent. Cause I mean, it's like asking someone, do they want like Ford or Chevy? Well, you're right. either like a, usually a Ford person or a Chevy person, right. whatever American cars or yeah. whatever. Um, and then there's like, you know, one thing will have something that you want, but then maybe that something that you want is kind of minor, but yeah, it will come with in, a higher price tag. Right. Or, it's all core. It's all the same. Right. It does the, it, it does the same job. Right. But it's just, little nuances of uh -huh. brand, you know, brand recognition and brand. Yeah. yeah so it's just sure. branding. Yeah. <laughs> so how did you end up choosing Thunder? Were you just like, oh, this is the one I'm leaning towards and just finally pulled the trigger, I guess? Yeah, I think ultimately that was it. Like I had gone back, uh, pulled the trigger. That was a good one. Um, <laughs> that wasn't on purpose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just slipped out. I got it. Um, <laughs> Yeah, you know what? I went back and forth. I know you guys have the the Eon, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. Eon uh, Mira Nine. So I think it's probably the equivalent to the Thunder Nova Thirty Five. So my bed space. <coughs> it's going to be a lot of that. My <clears throat> my bed space is twenty four by thirty five ish. That's the same um, as I know, but thirty five. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I think the Eon. It's funny the. Uh, the Canadian distributor for Eon is actually about 10 minutes from my house. Mm, so, can -cam. Uh, mm -hmm. They were definitely on the list. Yeah. Can cam. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I looked at them, uh, but ultimately went with under. Yeah. So I mean, mine for me was, was comfort because I had a lot of friends who also had eons and I didn't have a lot of friends who had thunders. So for me, it was an easy transition because I'm like, I need people <laughs> to, who, know it and I can go ask questions right. to when I have them because I'm going to have them and I don't want to be the only one with a thunder and they're going to be like oh no right no <laughs> you know? resources right yeah I think I was that was probably you know a big factor in my decision um uh, I'm good friends with Sam from Uncharted Customs I know mm. you guys had him on the show recently yeah. and uh he has a thunder so I talked to him a lot and he was a, a big help to me and a, one of the resources that I have to reach out to so yeah that, yeah. that definitely factored in my my decision making so, um, I, was it just like time or money? Like what made you finally, uh, make the jump to the laser? Um, yeah, it was, I think I set goals for myself last year, um, obviously, right. To, uh, um, I, I wanted to get a laser by the fall. I was a little bit behind. I waited till yeah. right after the new year. Um, but yeah, I was just reinvesting in my business, you know, saving up. And, uh, once I was able to afford it, yeah, I the trigger <laughs> I did it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there I, I made the decision and I didn't look back. So I'm super happy. So <clears throat> now that you've had it for a couple months, like what are your thoughts on like the, I guess the learning curve? So this is your first laser. A lot of people that we have on go from like Glowforge, yeah. which is like a hobby laser to an industrial laser. And we talk about that learning curve. So how was the learning curve for you? Um, with this industrial laser being your first laser? You know, I don't think it was that, that, that big of a jump as I expected. Uh -huh. um, there are definitely some parallels between a CNC router and a laser. Yeah. Um, so I kind of had that background, which helped, um, but it, there's a lot of differences as well. Right. Right. Um, and all the differences are positive for the laser I find. So, yeah. Um, so yeah. Yeah. So were there any, I guess, initial struggles that you had? Um, I guess that, like I had to learn light burn. I had never used light burn before. Mm -hmm. Right. So, mm -hmm. um, I, you know, in terms of learning, um, a software, um, when I got my CNC, I had to learn that software and that learning curve was a lot bigger for me. Okay. Um, and I think light burns, I think a great piece of software. It's really, it really is. Yeah. 
And I think the, the parallels between the software I was using and Lightburn really helped me cut down yeah. that learning curve, but there's still a lot of differences, right? Like learning speeds and powers. I was, you know, kind of just making it up as I go for a little bit. Right. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think I've, with help from friends and reaching out uh -huh. to her and um, yeah, I think I've got to figure it out. Yeah. For for sure. So what, um, what thunder does Sam have? I don't remember. He has See a 35 as well, I believe, but he has a hundred watt. Oh, okay. So, and that's the hard part. I mean, so it's good that like he has the same machine and so he could like share his settings and it would kind of give you an idea of like a starting point maybe, but it's not yeah, going to be an exact apples to apples because of the different wattage of the tubes. Yeah. And then I had another question. So would that, it. would that change like the power setting to their different Watts? Is that potentially, um, I think it would be mostly power. Um, I'm not sure if the um, if the laser tube actually has a lot to do with the speed. It probably does some, mm. um, but I think it is mostly the power that okay. you would probably he he would need a little bit more power to cut through than than Sam would with a hundred watt is okay. what I'm pretty sure. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's definitely a correlation between the speed and the power, right? Right. The more power right. you're getting, the faster you can probably cut. Um, right. So it's, there's differences, but um, it was a good starting point for sure. Yeah. And so what was the first thing you made? Uh, what was the first thing I made? I just jumped into it. I cut one of cut one of my spots. Uh, it was a sport logo. Uh -huh. And I was just like, literally, I, I sat there watching the entire cut because I was just blown Isn't away. Isn't it so amazing? <laughs> oh, like it was, it was mind boggling. I was so I excited. Everyone, everyone remembers that moment when you like, send the first job to the laser mm -hmm. and then you just stand there like watching it like in amazement <laughs> cuz i remember you and i watching the first cut on both of them on the glowforge mm -hmm. and on the mira so on the glowforge like we didn't even really know what lasers were when it showed up in our house and so when i sent the like the first thing over which glowforge they always have you cut this thing called the gift of good measure and it's literally like their version of like a ruler and it has a whole bunch of different like measurement things on it and so i remember like it engraving and we were all like oh wow and then it was cutting and it especially cut it me because i had no idea what it was yeah I, I mean i didn't and i well I bought but you you thing. did more research true for well, me it's just this big thing that showed up <laughs> that cost four thousand dollars surprise yeah <laughs> well it wasn't that I much mean, of a surprise I told you it was coming. It's like hey i want to buy this four thousand dollar thing <laughs> as we've said many yeah. times on the uh -huh. podcast. Well, and then, so then watching the first cut or first engrave on the Mira, I was oh, amazed at the speed mm -hmm. compared to the Glowforge. So when Glowforge engraves, the <laughs> the laser head does this. <laughs> when the glow, when the Mira engraves, the laser head <laughs> does this like <laughs> yeah. Yeah. seizure motion well, because and, it goes and, so yeah. fast and for me it was it was how quiet it was compared to <gasps> yeah because man that glow force was loud it's a jet it's a jet engine yeah yeah, yeah. especially <laughs> i've heard that yeah it's you can't like it's so funny because can't watch I mean, tv that's for sure i see and i didn't realize that until after he never told me <laughs> what was i gonna say it not only is really loud it has this like high pitched like part to it and i didn't realize that until i didn't have one anymore mm -hmm. and then you know because i would always like i would talk to um emily while she was cutting something mm -hmm. and her laser would be in the background and i couldn't couldn't right. hear it at all but her laser is like was four times the size of mine and i'm like how how does how is it so quiet when it's so much and bigger quiet, yeah. yeah and then now that i have had um my eon for i mean two and a half years almost that's crazy wow wow that is crazy um but i'll hear someone doing a video like it's usually someone i follow on Instagram, they'll be doing a story mm -hmm. and they'll be like recording like their day or whatever. Zzz. And the, <laughs> yeah, the, the forge will be going in the back and I hear that in the background and I'm like, oof, I don't miss that noise. <laughs> the glow forge is what got me to stop watching uh, Law and Order SVU. Oh, yeah. So you can't see because, his cases anymore. No, because <laughs> I used, it used to be it used to be one of my favorite shows. Um, 
But then when we got the Glowforge, I could no longer listen. <laughs> and, you know, it's, it's very dialogue heavy. So yes. that's that's when ridiculousness entered in my, my life because I just watched internet videos because I didn't have to hear them. Well, sure. but you, you also watched videos that you had seen, or not videos, movies you had seen before. Right, where I don't need to listen to it because I know what they're saying. I can follow along visually. Just quote it. You've seen it too many times. You can quote it with, from memory. Yeah, absolutely. Because right, I can't hear it. So yeah. I'm I'm so sorry you suffered it's in okay. silence. No, no, no. It wasn't <laughs> silent. It wasn't silent at all. I didn't suffer in silence at all. Don't well, worry about that. Okay, but you didn't tell me. <laughs> That's funny. I, one of the things, like when I, my laser first fired up, I was amazed by how quiet it was. Um, yeah. I was expecting it to be louder. <laughs> Um, I, actually, well, I, mean, I was concerned movie. something was wrong at first because it was so quiet. Which right. Me away. Yeah. Now, are CNCs, are, was your experience with CNCs, is it louder? Oh, yeah. So CNCs are really loud. One, because um, like the router that's doing the cutting is loud mm -hmm. itself. Mm -hmm. Some of the bigger ones that have like water cooled spindles and stuff like that, that's a bit quieter. But um, because it's, you know, cutting the wood um, with a bit, you also need dust collection, right? So the right. collector is also very loud. So right. you couldn't, like, I couldn't be in my shop with the CNC going without headphones on. Um, oh, okay. The laser, it's, you know, nothing. Yeah. Right. Especially compared to. Yeah. yeah. And so is your shop just your garage that's attached to your house? Yeah. <clears throat> How the heck did you make room for that thing? Did you already have room for it or? I had to do a little bit of shifting. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. So it's tight. It's tight in here. I've kind of reached full capacity. Yeah. Um, I'd actually, you know, there's a couple more tools on my list that I'd like to get. I just right. don't have room for them right now. Uh, my dream is obviously to have my own detached shop one day, but yeah. Um, three kids and a mortgage it's probably not going to happen. Yeah. Um, so the goal is this spring is I'm going to build an actual shed in my backyard to get rid of wow. some of the garden tools and the, the last really? few things that are taking up room in my shop. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, we so we would have the struggle where, um, so our laser is currently in the house, and it does take, it's in like a, a bedroom that is my office. And so it's it's very tight, you know, and surprisingly, it works pretty well. Um, but we would love to have something that is like still at the house, but like detached. So either everything in the garage or everything in a shed in the back. But again, so we have two kids and, you know, if it's like, if it's somewhere else, that makes it a lot harder, you know, especially with it being your side gig, it's going to be harder for you to fit in that, that time and then still like easily fit back in the, the family time as well. Yeah. So how old are your kids? Uh, I have three girls. Uh, the oldest is 12 Ooh. and then I have a 10 year old and then a five year old. Okay. We can relate to the five year old. Yeah. Well, and I can relate. <laughs> that's our oldest. I can relate to being outnumbered because he's outnumbered mm -hmm. and I'm outnumbered. Yes, yeah, so you're the opposite. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's three to one instead of four to one. Yeah, we're going to keep it that way too. Yeah, I'm really yeah. outnumbered. You know, the, the best piece of advice uh, I ever got about being um, a dad to all girls, mm -hmm. and I'm not quite there yet, but this will come in the next few years is that if I ever come home and there's a toilet seat that's been left up that I didn't leave up, then I have a problem. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> that means well, things are going on at the house. You know, what's funny the other day. <laughs> um, I was thinking, I'm like, I mean, I guess it's for like safety. Cause we're always like, you need to put the, the toilet seat down for mm -hmm. us. Right. But like, we don't ever have to put the toilet seat up for you. Right. It's the world we live in. <laughs> But it's also it's also a safety thing, because if we go to sit down, and it's not down, right. we fall in. Yeah, because no, you guys back in for some reason. <laughs> Be it's not like you can just see that it's up or down. In the middle of the night, you cannot. This is always their argument in the middle of the night. How many times do you go to the bathroom in the middle of the night? Very rarely. No, but do I you go, go to the bathroom in the middle of the night. But I go to the bathroom early morning where it's dark and I do not have my glasses on. I'm not gonna get into this argument. <laughs> let's not talk about toilets. No, let's not. <laughs> I think this there's definitely a debate to be had, but we'll never win this argument. So at I, all, no, at all. That's why. Yeah, yeah. Just don't yeah. try. It's okay. So, what are your? Do you have any like goals for this year for your? You business? said detached garage. Oh, 
<laughs> not this goal. year. Yeah. Not this year. That's big, big yeah. time goals. Yes, don't throw me off. <laughs> That's long term <laughs> goals. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I, you know, I had big goals for last year um, mm -hmm. and I reached most of them um, this year. No, it's just more and just um, coasting through coasting through. I think probably my biggest goals is um, one of the reasons why I wanted the laser was to get some new materials. Um, mm. out. So um, working with acrylic. Yes. Like um, so I want to incorporate a lot of acrylic into some of my pieces. I have some designs ready to go now that I have the laser. It's just, um, I've, I have a few pieces in my mind that I want to create, but I'm so busy with orders that I just don't have time to do them. Mm -hmm. uh, so I guess it's probably one of my goals to actually find the time to create these new designs that I can um, right. produce. Right. So that's the hard part is you don't, with it being your side business, you don't want to grow it. You're almost limited in a sense because you don't want to grow it too big because then it's more that you have to manage and then it's potentially more time away from your family like you it's yeah. how like so how how well do you i guess manage the three it's definitely a challenge um yeah but you know i have a very understanding wife and without her i could not do do this so right um yeah and i think you, you kind of touched on it i'm in the garage like my family knows where i am i'm right you know, i pop in and out uh, yeah. But it is, it's, it's a juggling act of balancing my full-time job, my career with my family and right. a side business. Right. So you, do your girls help you at all? Uh, the one, my middle one, she's the one that's shown the most interest and wanting uh -huh. to help and wanting to learn. Uh, the other two, the oldest, Not really interested. no, the youngest kind of too young, but the middle one, she's definitely shown some interest. So hopefully I yeah. can nurture that over the next couple of years. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, JR just is interested in touching absolutely everything yes. that he shouldn't. Yeah, I don't he think is. he actually, he's never really shown any interest in like making it. Right. And he, he does like everything. watching me mm -hmm. do stuff, but he just wants to touch everything <laughs> in my office. <laughs> so, for those who don't, who aren't familiar, what kind of signs do, what kind of signs is like your specialty or do you enjoy making the most? I, so I do a lot of custom work. So, I don't do um, a lot of like repeated designs. I have a couple, mm -hmm. um, like stock designs that I sell, but most of them are custom pieces. Um, I do some sports logos, but my main thing that I like doing is, um, other small businesses. I like turning mm -hmm. their logo into a 3d piece. So that's really, uh, that's my favorite to work on. Yeah. Cause it's, it's some supporting other small business owners, supporting right. the community. And, um, I take the most pleasure from that for sure. Yeah. Well, and for me, I have some interest in those just because then I only have to think of how I'm going to take that. Like the design is already made yeah. for the most part. And then I just have to think, how am I going to turn that logo into like something right. amazing? But the design part is already kind of already done because it's, you know, they have their colors are set. Their file is hopefully already made, <laughs> right. but then, you know, I just kind of have to bring it to life. So, yeah, I do that. Like I walk around. It's funny. I, you know, we're all, we're bombarded with, you know, marketing and logos everywhere. Right. Right. And I see business logos all the time. And I, in my mind, just naturally, I just start thinking how I would convert that logo into a 3D piece. Right. I, it's subconscious now. I just do it all the time. So, um, I, I do that with every literally ask. We talked about it last week yep. on the podcast. I do it with everything. If yeah. it was made on a laser, I'm like, tearing it apart and looking at like all the little pieces and how the cut was done and if there's any charring on the back and and whatever and then if it isn't done on the laser i'm like oh how could we make that on the laser and yeah our our brains never really <laughs> stop yeah. dissecting and thinking and and creating <laughs> ever since the glowforge we were on our way to drop our son oh off my at God, daycare i, I see and that sign this, all the time and there's this big sign of this um it's not a complex. I guess it's a, like a gated community. And it's, yeah, I mean, I it's forget, a complex. Yeah, yeah I it's, forget what it's, it's a called. Community. But they have this big sign of their name out front. And she's like, man, that must have been a big laser they used to make that sign. It's not and a glowforge. Like, <laughs> and I was like, you're definitely not a glowforge. I was like, I guess. It probably wasn't even a laser. Now right. that I, was, I think about yeah, it. I was like, it might have been like a, I mean, I guess a plasma cutter because it was probably made out of wood or not wood of metal and it's That's probably we, a plasma we, it's, cutter it's it's so like we don't even know what it's made of it looks no. like it could be wood could be metal it could be aluminum it could yeah. be it could be a, a 
it, but yeah, my brain stuff. immediately goes she, to like yeah. how <laughs> she's like, man, that must have been a big machine that cut that. And I'm like, I guess. I, I don't think of it like that, but I'm like, I guess. I, and my, my brain is always doing that, like no matter where we go or what we're doing. Yeah. So even just driving no, down the for, street. For TV, it does. My brain does that. He So he ruined me that way. So now anytime <laughs> I'm watching anything, especially on uh, like reels or TikToks or whatever. So when it's like these surprise, when they're like, you know, wow, they caught that on camera. You're like who recorded that mm-hmm. yeah it's so he ruins the like the the, the content because now i'm thinking about who recorded that oh, where that was, was that camera set up <laughs> yeah yeah and then like um, i love i love in i love watching reality tv just to look for the crew <laughs> just to look for the like the producer that didn't or, hide quick enough yeah or, or... <laughs> somebody like All right, who's that in the back there did, did you see that and she's like what i'm like the guy standing in the hallway look watch and we go back and he just like scoots out of the way because he realized the camera crew. Yeah. yeah. Or yeah. mirrors. I love mirrors. And because I, I look in the reflection oh, yeah. to see if I see anything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> see if I, I see crew. What's what's it called when uh, there's a mistake in filming where like. Oh, um, where, they, where something's moved, where the, the camera angles change, where they can tell it's continuity. 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 Yeah. Continuity, yeah. Continuity. yeah. I, I, I try to pick up on that stuff, too. I'm obviously not as trained as you are, but uh, right. I picked up on one last night. I was watching a show and I noticed one, but no. Uh, yeah. The one thing yeah. I get, my wife's left-handed and she mm. always notices when people are left-handed. Right. Yeah. Right. did before, but now. Yeah. Not me, too. So we'll be watching TV and I'm like, hey, there's a lefty. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I mean, it's like, so when you're thinking of buying a new car. Right. It's also that same process of, you know, oh, when we started, oh, when like when, when I, yeah, car. when I, when we got a Rogue, a Nissan Rogue, we right. saw them everywhere because yeah. now you're more like aware of them, and they've always been there, but you didn't notice them before until like you right. got one. Yeah, yeah. Like my company, switched, yeah, my company switched to Tellurides, and I'm like, man, there are an awful lot of Tellurides everywhere now. <laughs> yeah, it's just because uh, you see them. Yeah, because you're <laughs> yeah, your eyes open to them. Yeah. I want to talk about your reels though, because your reels are really entertaining. Like, so what is your like? What does your family think about them? Like, do you really enjoy doing them? Like, is it kind of part of like your outlet? I guess. Yeah, so, so my 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 family is very supportive. They, my wife tells me I'm funny. Good. I don't know if she actually <laughs> believes it or not, but she tells me. Um, my kids, I think they're half embarrassed and they half enjoy right, it. I was going to say, are you cringy yet? <laughs> yeah, maybe a little bit. Sometimes I try. Um, yeah. But they're good sports. I've included my kids in some of my reels and they always enjoy that. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, you know, some of them, are, they're, they're intentionally campy, right? Like I, right. I do it on purpose. Um, yeah. It's, it was definitely a marketing strategy for me. Um, I mean, it worked. You got me. <laughs> yes, that was kind of the goal, right? I figured the more eyes I can get on my page and my socials, the more business yeah. is going to drum up, right? And it's definitely worked for me. So, yeah, um, yeah, it was definitely a, a you know an intentional strategy. Yeah. Well, and I think the the key part in the reels, at least that I've found for me, and what I think why they work so well for you is you kind of you if you lean into who you are and your personality they aren't like they aren't as much work you know what i mean the ones that are easier for me to create are the funny ones or the ones that do really well for me are the the audios that like you know they're cursing or they're like snarky or you know what i mean those are those are easier for me and i always like in the beginning it was hard for me cuz i thought that like that would turn a lot of people off yeah. that kind of content. And then I realized that like, I mean, those aren't really my people anyway. If it yeah. does turn them off, if my goofy reels where I'm dancing or there's cursing or anything like that, if that turns them off, then they're not really my audience anyway. And I've seen a lot more success in, in the reels and, you know, um, engagement when I lean into those ones that, make me laugh or are funny or you know whatever goofy yeah absolutely right like i'm I'm the same way right like there's been times where i've had an idea for a reel and i may have started filming it and i just it doesn't feel real right it feels right. Cool or yeah I, I just abandon it because um who i am in my reels 
is silly and goofy. That's what I'm like in real life, right? right? Yeah. Uh, I get comments about, you know, the, the facial expressions I make. I don't realize I'm doing it. That's <laughs> my face, right? Like, that's my just thing. what I do. Yep. Um, yeah. So it's just, some of it comes naturally. Um, and yeah. it's, when you hear the audios and a lot of the stuff I use, I hear it in, instantly in my head. I formulate an idea for a reel and I, I just go with it. Yep. Same. I'll, I'll send them to myself and then I'll send myself like how I want to use that reel. So it'll be, you know, something for like the, um, the dancing one that I did uh, oh, right. last week. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I saw, saw that, that one. That was a good one. <laughs> Thank you. I was pretty proud of that one. Um, but that one was uh, the one I had seen was uh, she was like cleaning. And she was like, when a good song comes on and I'm cleaning and she was like, you know, all over her house, like dancing on like the tables or like her kitchen table or, you know, just all mm-hmm. the different places. And I meet when I immediately saw that one, I was like, oh, well, that's the dancing you do when a good song comes on and you're waiting like for your laser to to go. And although it, <laughs> it was more physical than I normally get. <laughs> in my videos the funny part too is he was in the garage which is here editing and i was in my office you know doing all those different angles and i came to show it to him and he like he laughed and then kind of immediately like you know shook his head like you're crazy (laughs) and he was like um i hope they know um that what your knees sound like when you get up off the couch. <laughs> and I'm like, well, yeah, I put that in the caption of basically like, yes, I'm out of breath and I will be sore tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I mean, those are the ones that are, they're easier to do because again, we're leaning into to who we are. And, you know, my, yeah, the, I'm, I'm the worst with the facial expressions um, as far as just in life in general. Like I can, I can close my mouth, but I can't turn off my face. Um, so if you want a <laughs> if you want a true reaction to something, just ask me unprepared and it'll, it'll, it'll come whether it's vocal or yeah. not. <laughs> Bo- body language is a big uh, part of language, right? And a lot of people mm-hmm. don't realize that. Right. <laughs> and it can't be taught. I mean, like you said, you know, when you're doing the videos, if it feels forced, if, if oh, it's same goes for the other side too, if you're not like necess- and it's not a bad thing if you're not funny or goofy, but if you try to do those and that's not you, it's going to be awkward <laughs> for yeah. you and for those who are probably watching as well. So I guess the key part is to just lean into who you are. Yeah, and, authenticity is is the key to yeah. to all this, whether it's um, content for social media or even like this podcast. Right. Like w- people like w- listening and watching because we are who we are. Right. We we joke. <laughs> we joke. Hot mess at all. <laughs> yeah, we joke. We joke with each other. Like this isn't just the show. We yeah. do this. We do this all the time at home. Yeah. So yeah. So one thing I usually ask in the beginning that I didn't ask because I'm messed up. Have you already, were you always creative or did this kind of just find this side business find you by accident? Like, how did you get into it? Yeah. So, um, I would say I was always creative. Um, I was big into art when I was in high school. Um, I actually went to an art summer camp, which is really nerdy. So did I. Um, Yeah. But (laughs) that's what I did. Um, in, so what was your art summer there. camp, by the way? What was that? What was it? Was it what just general art or was yeah. it like a particular like topic? They had all different um, oh, okay. focuses, painting, drawing, sculpting, photography, wow. drama, everything. Yeah. So mine was, um, uh, it's called, so it was a pottery class, but it was a particular type of firing technique. And I think it's, it was called Raku, R-A-K-U, if I remember right. And the way, and that firing technique is a certain type of like glaze that you put on it. And then you put newspaper into a trash can or some kind of bin and you light it on fire. I think we did that one time in the pottery class. And then you put it, and then you put the, your pottery piece in there and mm. that's how it it makes the yeah. like it makes a like really cool yeah and it's obviously it's not something that's ever like waterproof or edible or you know so there's definitely limited right you know uses for it but it was a really probably it was a really unique ink. huh probably because of the ink well, like and the black the... and like i mean so yeah. and some parts of it depending on your style you leave some of, of the pottery unglazed 
Mm. And so obviously if it's unglazed, it doesn't, you know, right. hold water, or do any of that kind of stuff anymore. But that was one that I did. Um, that was my, uh, we called it intermission and it was like a month long class um, after mm. winter break. So it was before the like second semester of the yeah. year started. Oh. Yeah. What was your, what was your like specialty in camp? Um, initially it was photography and this is back before digital photography. So it was actually like mm. dark rooms and stuff. So, right. um, but I actually really got into, um, sculpting. Mm. I enjoyed sculpting. Um, I've, I've never been a good painter. I can't paint to save my life with brushes and oils and stuff. Um, but, uh, pencils and pastels and stuff. I, I enjoyed that. Um, but yeah, so I was, I was big into art. I, I don't know how it is down there, but, um, here in Ontario, you only had to take an art credit in the ninth grade. Mm. Uh, and then it was elective after that. Yes, so, same, I think. Yeah. And the, the, as you got older, the classes got smaller. So mm -hmm. last year of high school, we actually had five years of high school back when I went there. Ooh. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's, now. it's only, it's only four, but it was no five. <laughs> so my fifth year of high school, um, I think our art class was 10 people. Right. So mm. it was, it was small. Um, right. Like that was my creative outlet. And then I went to university for not art. And right. I kind of shut off that creative part of my brain for a long time. Yeah. I became a police officer. Didn't need that creativity. Like I, I <laughs> thought right. I did at the time, but you know, after years, I, I guess I realized that creative outlet actually helps me. Um, yeah. Like I said, it's kind of like therapy. Your therapy. So, <laughs> Yeah, I just kind of stumbled into it. I was into woodworking and DIY stuff. Mm -hmm. And then, um, I had never used a scroll saw before. And I saw one used on Facebook Marketplace. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to grab that. And how much was it? They're generally like low in cost, right? It was a used uh, one. I think I paid $150 for it. Yeah. So, so I feel like for sign makers, the scroll saw is often. So we always talk about how um, the silhouette is like the gateway drug mm -hmm. for, yes. for lasers. Right. I feel like the scroll saw is another gateway drug for lasers as well for, yeah. you know, especially for sign makers mm -hmm. because the, what is it? The cost of entry or whatever that fancy term is, is a lot lower. Cause like for my silhouette, I also got it off of like Facebook marketplace. Yeah. And I think I spent a hundred dollars and it was a brand new inbox, whatever. And so it was easy to start that because it was just, it was a hundred dollars. That that hundred and fifty dollar investment turned into to tens of thousands of dollars of tools yeah. after that. So yeah. it spirals. It quickly. spirals quickly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we always ask, um, what is some advice that you give to a like new or struggling? It can be a laser owner, business owner. What's something you would tell like you know young young BA in <laughs> in your business? that, you know, just some advice when it shit gets hard. Yeah. I would just say, um, I guess maybe a couple things. The first thing is just try, right. Yeah. Um, if you don't try, you're never going to know whether or not you can do it or not. Right. Yeah. Uh, but the second thing is one thing I found, which has helped me immensely is there's a big community out there. Huge. And yeah. for the vast majority of them, you know, there's always going to be the couple outliers that are assholes. Yeah. I was gonna <laughs> yeah the, the majority are good people more than willing to help. Right. I, yeah. I have, um, asked tons of questions to other really talented makers and never once right. have I been blown off. Yeah. I've, you know, when I was first starting out, they gave me so much time and help. Um, and now I'm, free, you know, yeah. like I'm at the place where people reach out to me and I'm more than willing to give my time to help out and right. share the knowledge I have. It's not a secret what I do. Right? <laughs> Anyone can do it. Right. Um, you just got to, put the time in and learn it. Right. Yeah. And find your people. So yeah. we, we were talking about this yesterday cause there's a, um, a new, uh, laser. Well, not a new laser. He, he has a, a diode, okay. a 10 watt diode and he bought it so that he can support his terminally ill wife mm. and, you know, do this as like a side business, but also be home for her more right, right, so right. that, you know, and so he, that really took off and he wants to focus more on, like the business and wholesale orders and stuff. But with a 10 watt diode, you can only go so fast. Right. So your time, you know, you're spending a lot of time to make the, that same money for the yeah. same item. And so he ordered a, um, an Eon, but it won't be here until June. Mm -hmm. And so he reached out to uh, a local maker 
and was like, hey, you know, would you be willing to help me like wholesale, you know, cut my blanks for me or whatever. Um, and the person was, was, was an asshole, was completely rude and was like, was more pissed about the competition rather than interested in helping out right. a fellow maker. And he was super discouraged because we kept telling him to do that. To, right, to reach post out in the to, groups, right. to reach out to local makers, like see, you know, who can who can help you wholesale while you wait for your laser mm -hmm. that's coming. And you know, we keep trying to convince him that that's that's not everyone. We hope that that isn't the norm, and it isn't right. at least the norm in our communities with Instagram or the Facebook groups that I'm in. And sure, there's always going to be those people, but those people who are who are too worried about the competition and who absolutely won't help like those are going to be the ones who are going to be more affected by the competition because right. what it should be is like when my glowforge went down and i went to my friend slash competitor's house mm -hmm. and i cut on her glowforge until 2 3 a.m to cut all of my you know all of my stuff and i've gone to emily's house right when my laser went down right before the conference last year and all that like it should be able to to be an asset and not a competition yeah. but you know if you find those people i just want to say like don't be discouraged like yes it's really annoying and it it sucks but that that doesn't have to be the norm there's tons of us who are willing to help in every way we can whether it be actually helping with the wholesale or just with knowledge right because it would be really rude of me to not share any of my knowledge when me getting that the reason i'm where i'm at is because people helped me in the beginning right so Absolutely. yeah yeah you know but one of my i would say one of my golden rules in life is you know this is how i kind of live my life is um don't be a dick yeah, yeah. it's <laughs> not a hard thing to do right, right. <laughs> it's, it really is it it's not it that hard to be nice. Yeah. Uh, it is for some. Yeah. It's just, it's, it, there are those gatekeepers out there. They do exist, right. but well, I, I, they are few and far between. I think there's the vast right. majority of people are more than willing to help. Yeah. I can, there's been lots of times where people have reached out to me for a piece where it's a, I don't have the time to do it in the, the right. time frame I need, or B it's not really my style, mm -hmm. but I know someone yep. who does do that style or may have the time. And I'm more right. than happy to refer them to another maker that I know right. that can help them, right? Because yeah. I can't do it. So what what good does it help me from preventing right. this customer yeah. to get this they want done, right? Right. Well, and with the gatekeeping, I will say that just because we are helpful, we're not also saying that you can't keep any of it to yourself. If yeah. you perfected a, a technique that took you a fuck ton of money right. and a fuck ton of time, and you don't exactly want to give every single part of that process away, that's a hundred percent. Okay. Right. Like I resell stuff on my, on my keychain site. And I've had people ask me before and I get it because I am an open book, but they've asked me, you know, Hey, would you be willing to s share your supplier? I don't plan on like, selling these to laser owners and the answer is nicely fuck no but like <laughs> you know and like and i don't i don't fault you for asking right but at the same time like you know there are going to be things that you're allowed to keep like private and separate mm -hmm. um you know so that doesn't mean you have to share like 100 percent of everything right. like i remember um jb the puzzle maker that we mm -hmm. had on you know forever ago um, I messaged him a lot cause I literally just want to make one puzzle and I was, you know, getting tips from him on, on right, the best to way do to do it and stuff. And, you know, obviously there were some parts where he was like, you know, I don't really share my like adhesion process or whatever. And his process was also different than mine because he was mass producing at that right, point. Right. So the one. adhesive that he does and the way he applies a picture to a board is way different than me because he has fancy machines that do it now. Yeah. And I just want to make one. <laughs> yeah. But that one, but also too, is like, is you're you're planning to just make one yeah but if that one takes off True. for you yeah and stuff it's like it's like well i just gave her like you know she created her whole niche off of right you know kind of like i gave away my secrets right and now you ran off with it even yeah. if that's not the case right if it just so happens to be that way because we all know that that can happen where right. you you set to make something one time and then it blows up and it's now always, you find like, yourself making yeah. it all the time your niche is usually yeah. an accident yeah, yeah that's true yeah so it's yeah. like 
it's that and that's probably how they found it. you know like they're like oh man i love you know it's true right puzzle p and it blew up for them so like well let me hold on to this because right. i fell into it if i give my secret somebody else might as well yeah. so yeah i get it yeah yeah cool it's true. Well, like you- I, <laughs> now that i have the laser like i, I know i could be spending time making ornaments and tags and things mm-hmm. like right. that that's not really my business though right yeah. so right. i'm it's not something i intend to get into right there's lots of people that out there that do it um, yeah i kind of my yeah my i don't really intend to make a bunch of signs i personally absolutely despise uh shipping large signs like i I hate it (laughs) so i don't even want to make them like in theory it's like oh that sounds like that sounds nice that's a lot of money that could be a pretty Mm. penny and then i'm like fuck i gotta ship that thing never mind (laughs) yeah i'm good (laughs) shipping is it probably one of the things i like least about this and it's it's not even just the ship. It's actually physically packaging something up. The yeah. ship drives me crazy. Right. Drives me nuts. Yeah. Well, and that's one of the. That was my first, um, uh, I guess, area in my business that I really underestimated the the time and cost of it. When I shipped my first sign, and I, I think I hopefully. D- couldn't tell them what it would cost to ship. Mm. And I think I'm glad I did. I still undercharged. I know a hundred percent I did, but I didn't plan on it taking me an hour and a fucking half to ship that to just not even ship it. I just to pack it in a box. Cause I right. had to create a box for that sign and like all of the like padding and then, yeah, no, yeah. it's, <laughs> okay. it's definitely stressful. And yeah. the, the other part of it was it, you do all that work and then you're putting it in UPS's hands most of the time, right? Yes, right. right. Those guys, sometimes I think they're just kicking boxes around. But, uh, <laughs> totally. It's well, that then, stressful is, you know, waiting for a piece to arrive to a customer and make sure. That oh, God. Well, the, yeah, you put yeah. your your time, your heart, your blood, sweat and tears literally into this sign to make it perfect. And then, you know, it'll arrive. And if it arrives damaged, it's like, fuck. Some, I mean, and sometimes it's not fixable. That means like legit, right. you got to start all over yep. and you hope that you get that refund and if you don't then yeah it's just it's a well, whole and thing. also possibly redesign because you don't want it to break again right yeah you could potentially find like a uh issue with the design but then if it's, if it's not a design it's like now how do i ship it the second right. time and hope they don't don't break like, it again yeah <laughs> kick it yeah well and that's the other thing too i did find early on when i shipped something i packed it too tight and yes. it broke because mm, it I didn't give it enough space breathe. to like breathe, I guess. Mm-hmm. And it broke because I did too much. Right. So yeah, finding that that balance with shipping. If I could pay someone to like ship it, like to do it all for me, like I would be more willing to do bigger signs and stuff. But I'm also a control freak, so I'd be really pissed if I hired somebody and it broke anyway. To, and it broke, yeah. and then I have to remake it. Mm-hmm. Like, no, I'd be really mad. <laughs> yeah. Well, you've been great. Thank you yes. so much for. Um, oh, we need to tell people Where how to find, to find you. you. Yeah. So uh, my website is www.wobblyarrowsignworks.com, and I'm Wobbly Arrow Signworks at, uh, on all the socials. You can find me there. Awesome. Perfect. Well, I enjoy your re- you my how here fish. <laughs> I enjoy your reels, so please keep those up. Yeah. They make me laugh all the time. So glad to hear it. Keep being yeah. you. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank Thanks. you. You feel better. <laughs> Thanks, you too. <laughs> and now for your life update. No. Hey. So I am. How are you feeling? Um, as great as I sound. Yes. Mm-hmm. So we said at the top you had pink eye a week ago yesterday it was yesterday it was a week because if it was a week ago i wouldn't have my glasses on anymore okay i know you want to say things in my current time it's it's a week ago when i see this yeah but it was that day then that day then so if we say a week ago Mm -hmm. but i still have glasses on That means I'm wearing glasses for two weeks because of pink eye when it's really just a week. For like three weeks, actually. Two or three weeks. This comes out next week. Never mind. I don't know what she's saying. You guys understand. Start over. Over? Yeah. That was a good banter. Fine. Keep going. All right, let's start over. (laughs) I know it's fine. So anyway, like it's it's hard. I can't. I my brain can't do that. My brain can't. can't, No. This is released next Friday. 
Yeah. Then for them, they know that the day we recorded it, okay. I had pink eye the day before. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yesterday. Yesterday. A week ago. Yeah. Okay. Yesterday, a week ago. Mm-hmm. You do the math. Yep. We're not going We'll to. do the show. <laughs> and I guess you do the math because she can't. No, okay. I can't. But anyway, so <clears throat> the other day in <laughs> the Facebook group, I had a, you know, a day of desperation and it's whenever this is that showed up that, and I was just, I was feeling terrible mm-hmm. and I was just like, who do I need to see right. to not feel like this anymore? Right. And it like, I'm, I'm so, I'm so over it. Like I, I feel bad when like listeners and friends and people mm-hmm. who have, if, if you've listened to any episode in the last two months, you've heard me be sick or ever. Almost ever, but definitely in the last right. two months. And, you know, they're always like, hope you're feeling better. And the answer is never <laughs> yes lately. And it's really fucking annoying. Yeah. Yeah. And so I'm just like, I'm beyond over it because, like, my goal for January was to get out my laser course. That was my goal last year. But LED then we course. were that, that thing. My, and that's the other thing. My brain, it, Fuck. And it's not COVID. I know what no, you're thinking. It's, it's not, not COVID. COVID. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised at this point, but you know, whatever. So, and that was already my goal last year, but then everything we were dealing with with JR, I just right. didn't have the mental capacity or the time to right. even be able to think of tackling that. And so then now that we've gotten him in a better space currently, I'm like, okay, my that now, you know, my goal is January. And then January I spent mostly sick and miserable. And then it was like, okay, February. I can't be sick and miserable for that long. And then here we are to mid March, and like it's, I'll get better for a couple days, Mm -hmm. and then something new will come along. And And I say something new, right? It's just just a little little better. better. It's not even near like almost good. Right. It's just a little. It's like I'm just not miserable that those couple days but i still have a cough or i still have congestion or i still have something right and so (laughs) your facebook is going crazy (laughs) apparently it always is and it's not even like it's it's notifications i'm in a million group chats we'll try to figure out to mute that somehow um so you know i'd get a little bit better and then something new would pop up and it'd be mm-hmm. a new symptom that i didn't have before so right. even though i've been sick of shit for the last two months i haven't been congested yet and here i am like you know i show up it was last friday and we're sitting on the couch and I, just sneezing a million times right. to the point where we were joking about you're not going to give me any more like bless you's because it was just yeah, it was repeating. Too much. yeah. <laughs> at this point it's like i'm gonna give you one and that's gonna <laughs> then you're carry done for over the day it. yeah yeah Um, and so I just, I, am and I know that like, that was a possibility because, you know, I said weakened immune system because I was fighting the bronchitis and, and I know like asthma and I have allergies, but it's like, there's gotta be, there's gotta be something. Cause I, like, I can't go on like this. I've, I've, I've limped through with my business and still had some pretty like successful sales on the website Mm -hmm. and that kind of stuff. But I I haven't touched the led course. I have done some planning. The planning I could do while I'm sitting on the couch. I think I see, I see a bunch of LEDs sitting on the couch. I, exactly. So I've done some things. Right. I ordered a bunch of LED strips to get started to have them on hand. Because at this point, I have to pray for a good day mm. and have everything ready to go. So that if I have a good day, I can just jump on it right. and like do something. Right. Because I don't know when they're coming. And if I wait for when they're coming, by the time I order something or get something set up, it's going to be gone. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm just I, I made an appointment with my virtual primary because um, that's the world we live in now that I can have one of those. Mm-hmm. And um, she thinks it's uh, allergy related asthma like flare up right now. This right. one. This one. Um, and so she gave me a couple things to, to try for that. And I'm, so I'm trying those. And then she also did, um, called in like a, a lab workup. Mm-hmm. And so I'll probably do that, uh, next week. Um, the annoying part about that too, is like, great. She called those in, but I <laughs> shut up. 
Well, I'm saying mm-hmm. I was talking to them. Mm-hmm. True. This week. Um, but I don't feel well enough to like go and right, do and the fasted do labs early in the morning and make sure I'm hydrated. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like, I'm hoping that I can just muster it up by, by Monday and go get them done and see if there's anything else going on as well. But I would like to not, not be like this and not be doing as much as I can from the couch. I like, yeah. I want my business to grow. Like we have goals, we have yep. things to do. And it's definitely just kind of getting in the way of that. Yeah. Besides just being annoying. Right. Like who wants to not be a hundred percent for this long? Right. Not me, <laughs> but um, so we do have some really, really, really exciting news though. We do. Mm-hmm. What are we sharing? Our friend. Yes. Finally, man. Our we'll let, poor friend. We'll let her tell the we, story. We'll when let she her gets tell it. her tell the full but, story. But let me just say, it was a long road to get here. This poor family. They cl- the closing for so we're talking about Heather, yes. my bestie, my laser bestie. Closing on her house. They here in were Florida. supposed to close on on Tuesday. They drove fifteen plus hours from Pennsylvania down to Florida. I'll tell the whole story. I'm let not. Tell I'm not. I'm not. But with a five year old. Her mom, her husband, two dogs, two cats, and a fish stick. Mm-hmm. And they've been homeless <laughs> for four days. But they weren't, they, they technically were, but they, they were put up somewhere like they're good, they're safe. Yeah, they and, weren't like on the streets. Right. Or living out of the but car. But they literally didn't days. have a home. But they just hadn't clothes on their house. Um, doing and that. they were put through the ringer. Yep. On that loan. But I'm happy to say that right this minute, or possibly they might even be finished right this minute a week ago, according to John. Um, <laughs> they, they closed last week. Um, hopefully they've closed by... Hopefully now. they closed last week. <laughs> but they're I mean no, they're no, in yeah. closing they're, they're in, right they're now. In, yes. They so, got the clear to close. So. Uh, so I'm just I'm so excited. I like I my stomach was in knots and my anxiety was through the roof. Man. I can't even imagine yeah. what theirs were because they yeah. were the ones actually going yeah. through it. I was I know, just a friend. I know she doesn't um watch this long into the podcast. <laughs> right. But if for some strange reason, Heather, you're watching. She, she she withheld from calling you many a times yeah to check up on you and called i did your realtor instead i did i, I, I like, finally hey, i finally on the last doing? day had the like the the brain or the idea to like oh let me bug the realtor, our, the realtor instead of her um because i just i hated like you know ch- regularly checking in and there not being an update right because i felt like every time i checked in and there wasn't an update i'm just like digging that knife in right of course <coughs> right <coughs> but i also didn't want to be the friend who wasn't checking in on her right right so, so yeah yeah but and we're Floridians. recording we're recording too th- this week last week at some point so that <laughs> so that we can go see them next yeah. week and help them and help settle them in. move. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. I'm very, very excited. I'm mm-hmm. I'm ready for Jr. and Jackson to be besties with Logan, and mm-hmm. yeah, I'm just so excited that she's here. There's and a lot of driving in my future, I think. I think every weekend we're going to be up there. Maybe not every weekend, but every it's probably other going to be. It's probably going to be. A lot. A lot. It's going to be common. Yeah. 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 Sorry. <laughs> road trip. Yeah. Road trip every monthly road trip, bi weekly road trip. Yeah. Monthly. These two <laughs> monthly. I mean, it might. You know, you always have like big plans. Oh, I'm going to see her every week. And then right. it's going to be like three months go by right. because of life or whatever, yeah. you know? And I she's going to have her I own just, life I too. Hope, so. I hope it is monthly because she comes down here every other week and we go up there every yeah so i hope it's a little bit of back and forth probably not (laughs) but we'll see she 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 has more space than we do yeah yeah she does yeah so but anyway we're super excited for heather welcome to florida heather and 
Lobo Designs and, yeah. and all of that. And Lobo's just, new headquarters. Lobo's. I think she's going to call it because so her last house in Philly was the Lobo Mansion. OK. And then this one, I think she called it the Lobo Bungalow. Oh, OK. Yeah. That's so cool. I think that's going to be the name of cool. of this one. There's a pretty funny moment where I think she called it that. And then Bud was like, we'll have to get a sign made that says that. <laughs> and she looked at him and she was like, really? He's like, you know what I mean. <laughs> but yeah, uh, yeah. So that's our our life update yep. for now. Thanks um for watching. Don't forget to like, like and, and subscribe. subscribe. Smash that like button, or just tap it. You know, just click on it. Normally. Yes, but um, subscribe. We're we're almost we're almost yes, there. We're, we're so close. We're, we're so close, close to eight hundred, which means we're also close to a thousand. Mm -hmm. So keep watching on YouTube, That's it. please. Yep. You can keep downloading. I I'll, we'll yes. take those numbers as well. Yeah. But you know, watching on YouTube, giving us those watch hours. Yep. You know, just maybe even letting it play in the background in the while background. you're at work. Yeah. Or you know, just put your computer just, on, mm -hmm. let it roll. Just let the playlist play. go. Yeah. Just uh -huh. let her go. Grow those numbers. Yes, please. <laughs> we love you. Yes. And that's been another great episode of the Rally Back Project with Crystal and John. Bye. Maybe we're all done. <laughs>